Hello and welcome to the NC Podcast. My name is Natasha Collins and I am the founder of NC Real Estate, which includes its members club for landlords and property investors to come and build a profitable property portfolio that completely aligns with their goals. We have got something really special coming up this November, which if you're not on my mailing list or in my Property Investment Mastery Facebook group, you're gonna want to get in there now, honestly. Throughout the end of November, actually from the 11th of November, so that's kind of the middle of the month, I'm going to be doing a members club takeover so that you can see exactly what happens in my members club. And then here's the secret. I'm opening the members club this month, just for four days. You're not gonna know when that is unless you are on my newsletter, so on my mailing list. And if you want to join my mailing list, head to ncrealestate.co.uk forward slash flowchart. I'll put the link below. I'll also send you my property investment expansion success formula. And then once that email comes through, you'll also get the link to join the Property Investment Mastery Facebook group and make sure you do. You do not want to miss out on all the goodness that is coming your way this month. The links are going to go below in the show notes. So if you want to click them now, go do it. But make sure you continue listening to this podcast because I've got a feeling there's going to be some things in here that are going to completely resonate with you. The minute you find a property that you're interested in and your gut is going to tell you that this is a good thing. I've far too often gone into something with my head and my gut's going, Natasha, stop. Like, this doesn't feel right. And I've had to back out. Whereas this time my gut's like, yeah, fine. We've not got a problem with it. My head's like swimming with thoughts of what could go right, what could go wrong. But that's a good thing for me because I'm like, well, I can get that out on paper. So then the first step was to ask my mortgage broker if I'd get lending on it based upon the rental income and the potential value. Yes, tick. Secondly, I then did a deal analysis based upon the maximum amount I could afford to borrow. Did that work? Was there a business case in it? Yes, fabulous. If I needed to take investment, was there, n- a much, was there enough net profit to be able to pay back the investor or at least give them an interest? Yeah, fabulous, so I can make interest payments. Number four, when I remortgage this in two years time, is there going to be equity that I can take out of it? Well, yes, there is, because it's so far under value. Fabulous, so I can use that equity to pay back my investor in two years time. Great, so I've already secured that for myself. And do I have any other assets that if, I can't, I can't do the remortgage in two years time because of something else. Would I be able to save up the money as a nest egg in that time just as a backup? Yes, I would. Okay, tick. So I've now covered all bases. Next up, it's put in the offer. Put in the offer and see what happens. You can always pull out of that, but you need to know how much you're actually going to be paying for that property. So put in the offer. Now, some people say to me, but Natasha, people don't accept offers without seeing what's in your bank account. Well, why do they need to see what's in your bank account? Surely that is a breach of GDPR. You don't have to give anybody your bank account details if you don't want to. So put in the offer and see if it's something that they will accept. If they'll accept it, then at that point, you're going to go out and get an investment or you're going to find the money. Go and explore all sources. And when I'm trying to find money, as I said, I talk to as many people as I possibly can about this deal. And I say the good things and I say the bad things because everybody who invests needs to know everything. And then they can make a fully informed decision. And I also explain how much return or interest they are going to get based upon the amount that they put into the property. After that, It's about putting it in solicitor's hands if you're confident you can get the money. Of course, if you're not confident you can get the money and confidence is key here, it ain't gonna work, so don't waste the the seller's time. So make sure at this point you're, you're very, 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 very confident that you can make this work. Then it's about finding the long term finance option. Once you've found the finance, once you've found the deposit, it's time to get going. But at every step of the way, if you are feeling like, oh my gosh, this is overwhelming, I'm scared, I'm terrified. Yes, just know that it happens to everybody 
and get sat down with your pen and your piece of paper and write your pros list and your cons list and what is the worst case scenario that can happen and actually the worst case scenario for me when it boiled it down to it was that I could be 20 grand overdrawn but then I knew how to pay back that 20 grand. If the worst comes to the worst, and this is not likely to happen, this is like the 0.05% that might happen. It's completely not likely to happen, but you always fear the worst case scenario. You always go down that route. But if you can come up with a solution of how you would survive that worst case scenario, you are then equipped for everything. In which case, keep moving forward. Share your fears. You don't have to be the brave property investor all of the time. You know, property investment is risky. We all know it. Share that. Talk about it. Talk about it with someone who you trust. Start turning it into something that actually you feel good about or you can laugh at eventually. Every time I've invested in a property, I felt like I'm going crazy. I told you about the time one one purchase the night before completion, I'm sleepwalking around the house. I have never slept walked apart from that. So know it. But if you can have that also, that reasonable common sense, pen to paper, let's write this all down. You will see and you will figure out pretty quickly whether it's the right thing to go with or not. Now, as you can probably tell, I'm not really far f- through this deal at all. So I will keep you updated with it. And I've also not released any address details or anything because it is an off-market deal and I want to keep that to myself. But hopefully that's um, that's opened your eyes to the process that I go through. And yeah, I wasn't expecting to buy anything this year. I already said that, but here we are. What else could the end of the year hold in store? <laughs> 2019. But it's exciting. So hopefully that's alleviated some of your fears around buying property. But if it hasn't, and really it's okay if it hasn't, you've now got the tools so that when you find a property deal that you actually think, yeah, this could work, fabulous. Now you're back in control of the situation and you can make it work for you. So I hope that's been a really useful podcast and I hope it's opened your eyes to how I look at things and my processes and you can in turn use that for you. If you've liked this podcast, don't forget to leave me a good review, please. Your support really, really supports me here. And also make sure you follow the podcast on whatever platform you listen to your podcast on. So make sure you're subscribing. Thank you for listening to me this week. I cannot wait to catch up with you again soon.